Did you ever have to work under pressure? Maybe a deadline is coming up from a client project and you have to finish the animation or you just want to get more efficient in Blender. I know this feeling too well and I want to learn how to get more efficient in Blender to create higher quality animations and yeah, just do more with my time. So that's why I want to challenge myself in this video to create the same animation in five minutes, 30 minutes and two hours. The goal of this experiment is to find out what is actually possible with little time and to share my learnings at the end of the video. For the render we are going to create today, I had this idea in mind and created a quick mood board you can see here. So the idea is basically like an abandoned destroyed city like you can see here and then the camera will be close to the ground uh, similar to this and there will be like buildings to the left and the right of it and maybe also some stuff in the foreground like down here the shot will be in portrait so 9 to 16 and I also created a really quick um, storyboard and yeah put my bad sketching skills to work so yeah, you can see the idea is to have three really quick close-up shots of this uh, sci-fi motorcycle. And then in the end, there will be the final shot, which will be around six seconds. And in the shot, I will tilt the camera um, slowly up until you see the whole, um, like something similar to this down here. And then you can see the motorcycle passes by. And with that, I would say, Let's get straight to it and start with the five minutes. Okay, so as a preparation, I went ahead and imported a few models from the Kit Bash Warzone kit and some ground destruction from the wreckage kit. So yeah, um, let's get started. Let's get the timer ready and let's start. I knew the five minutes were over before I already started. So I quickly added in a floor, added in a camera and changed the aspect ratio. With that, I exactly knew where I had to place the asset in front of the camera and didn't waste any time. Then I just started with placing around the assets. I put the ground assets into the foreground to cover that. And then I put the building into the background. I just moved them around until it felt good. Put the bigger buildings to the side, put the smaller buildings in the middle. And yeah, with that, the five minutes were nearly already over. I just had time in the last 30 seconds to add in a ground texture, which I had to download real quick from Cargo uh, because I forgot to prepare that. And yes, then the five minutes were already over. Okay, this was insane. I barely had time to place all my assets around. And I don't even know why I did five minutes because there's literally no time. I rushed everything and tried to create like a basic layout. Um, and yeah, I think you kind of can see what I'm going for. But yeah, it's like a long way until it looks good. So yes, let's continue with the 30 minutes and see what I can do in the next 30 minutes. And yeah, how it will look differently in the end. First of all, what I did, I scaled down the texture because that's like the, <laughs> that looked pretty bad in the five minute one. And yeah, I just scale up the UV. So the texture gets scaled down. Uh, that's just how it works. And yes, after that, I imported the motorcycle um, we want to use later. And then I started messing around with the HDRI because right now we had the lighting coming from behind the camera and everything looked very um, bright and lit evenly. So I just experimented with the rotation of the HDRI and even by just rotating it 45 or 90 degrees, you get a very different look. So the one I really liked was the one where the sun was right behind the building. So it creates like this shadow that cuts the image in half because I imagined it would look cool if the motorcycle would drive out of the shadow into the light. So yes, then I also tried out different HDRI to check how yeah, the colors look, um, how the clouds look and everything. And yes, I ended up with this one in the end. While creating the scene in the background, give me a few seconds to tell you about this video sponsor. What even enables me to create this animation in such little time is Kitbash 3D. Kitbash 3D offers a collection of over 10,000 high quality premium models that are even used by the top artists in the industry for movies like Doctor Strange, Black Adam, Spider-Man and many more. Whether you're a freelancer who is just starting out or a long time pro, you can find all you need to create your story with all sorts of cohesive styles and themes. From futuristic to historical, 
Kitbash3D offers an affordable way to produce professional work where your imagination is the limit. Great artists deserve great tools, and that's where Kitbash comes in. I can tell you from my own experience using Kitbash over the last years that it's helped so much with speeding up the process and creating high quality animations. My favorite thing is their Korg web, which helps you organize all the different assets and materials. Here you can see all the kits you already own, or if you buy their subscription, you get instant access to all the kits. And what I especially like about this is, for example, if you need a certain material for something in your scene, you can just go to the material tab and search for it. And the same with the model, which helps so much by organizing all these assets. Make sure to use the link in the description and use the code FLORIN15 to get 15% off your purchase. And with that, let's go back to the video. Then I put all my background buildings into a collection and added the collection as an instance. And this just, yeah, enables me to duplicate the instance multiple time without wasting any computer resources. And that's exactly what I did. And I just dragged them in the background to add some more buildings and yeah, just add some more stuff in the background. I also did the same with the foreground and also created a new collection and also added the collection as an instance. After that, I downloaded some more assets from Kitbash Cargo and with one click imported them into Blender. And while it was importing, I was also checking out the reference board, like the mood board from the beginning again to see if I'm still on track and if everything yeah, comes to my mind. But yeah, then I moved the new assets in place, moved them around. And yeah, this is just a try and error stage to see what looks good and what is pleasing for the eye. And of course, you can also kind of form a composition. And yeah, then next I tried something out because I was really limited in time. I was thinking, okay, how can I scatter more assets and add more details? So what I did, I added in a plane and added a simple geometry setup where I scatter points on faces and then instance on these points. And I instanced the collection with this ground um, destruction with this like ground debris. And then I just put it under the floor I already have. So some of it was sticking out to yeah give the impression as if the assets were lying on the floor. And this isn't a good way to do it, not at all, because it would be way better to have like single stones and wood planks and whatever, and put them into this geometry node setup, but I didn't have time for this. So I just did it like this. And I also did one in the middle with a little bit less. And yeah, and then I deleted some geometry in the initial model that looked a little bit weird or was sticking out too much off the floor. And then I changed the HDR eye rotation again and just fine-tuned it a little bit more. Then I also adjusted the colors on the motorcycle and on some cars to just get a more pleasing look. And I wanted the motorcycle to be um, blue and not red. For that, I just added in a hue saturation node and changed the hue. For the last step, I added in some puddles because I wasn't pleased with the ground texture, but I also didn't have time to set up any displacement. So I imported this shader setup I got from Blender Guru from his puddles tutorial and just painted in some puddles to give it like a little bit more contrast and to make the ground texture look a little bit more high quality. Then for also one of the last step, I duplicated some buildings and put them behind each other because there were some holes where you could see through the building to the sky, which I, yeah, I just thought it looked weird. So I just quickly duplicated them. And then, yeah, I just adjusted some final stuff, like moved around some assets, um, changed the sun again a little bit, the HRI rotation, and also some puddles. And then the time was already up. 30 minutes are over and it's just crazy how fast time passes. That felt like five or 10 minutes to me. And yeah, but still, I think we could like make the scene a lot better. I changed the lighting a bit. I changed some textures on the ground. I added in these puddles to make the ground look a little bit better, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep them, if I like them. Um, but yeah, now let's continue with another two hours where we will add in all the important details where we'll actually animate everything <laughs> because now we still didn't have time to animate anything and it's still just an image. And so yeah, let's get started with the two hours. Now with two hours time, I didn't have to stress as much, but still I wanted to use the time as efficient as possible. So first of all, what I did, I readjusted the camera 
and I moved it a little bit down, a little bit more to the ground, and yeah, just adjusted the camera a little bit. Then I added in a volume cube to just give it a little bit of a foggy feeling. And yes, then I imported some car dust I had laying around on my disk. I used for another project um, and adjusted the volume material just to um, yeah get a reference. And then next I imported the character and adjusted the rig. So this um, took some time um, because it was just some manual labor to yeah, just the whole rig and parent it to the motorcycle. Then I just quickly animated the motorcycle with two keyframes and added the curves to linear. So it moves at the same speed. And yes, next I changed the ground texture because I didn't like the puddle. I didn't like the ground texture at all. So I tried out some different textures and I ended up with this one. I really like this, how it looked and also with this placement. And that's what I did next. Um, I added in a small plane just for the foreground and added some displacement to it. And I did that to just, yeah, because I, if I would add displacement to the whole floor, my whole PC would probably crash. And also you can't really see it in distance. So I just wanna add it to the foreground and separate the fore and the background with some assets. And then in the background, I just put in the same texture, but without displacement. And yes, it really looks cool and it's a really, important to add those small little details into it. Then I added in some more 3D models from Kitbash, some wreckage stuff, some debris stuff, and also moved some of them in the background closer to the camera. Then I fixed the scattering geometry node setup I had before um, by separating a big pile model into smaller parts and using these small parts to scatter around, which looked way better. Then I also started animating the camera and also adjusting the motor bicycle I animated before. And to see like an actual real time view, I rendered out the solid viewport. And yes, because my viewport in Blender couldn't play real time anymore. And this really helps to get a feel of the actual speed in the end. Another thing I did, I just quickly added in some smoke stock footage um, onto planes and added them around the scenes to add some more details and some small smoke yeah everywhere around the scene next i replaced the initial car dust um, weed bee animation with a new one which i just quickly adjusted the speed in the amber Jam project file and exported it out again i had one problem because the motor bicycle was driving so fast and the smoke couldn't keep up so it looked a little bit weird in the beginning um, so i just found something in the middle and slowed the smoke down a little bit and also the motor bicycle in blender i also slowed down that a little bit and that's exactly it um, if you're under time pressure you don't really have time to troubleshoot this kind of stuff um, so yeah but then i just added in some last minute foreground assets to give it a little bit more depth and yes that was already it and i was at the end of these two hours the two hours are also done and this definitely turned out better than i expected for two hours um, but obviously there's still like some fine tuning in the details then of course like the three shots the three close-up shots we didn't have time to make these and of course also the whole post processing and more so yes it's definitely a way to go if you want to polish it and make it look even better but yeah i think for two hours i'm pretty pleased with this here are the three results side by side and keep in mind for a 3d render two hours is still very little time and that we were able to create anything watchable is thanks to these amazing high quality assets and of course by taking as much shortcuts as possible and working as efficient as possible but for me it was a great experience nonetheless and it showed me how much is actually achievable in two hours if you just focus and push through it and yeah just work smart use stuff you already used in the past use assets and so on so let's get to my learnings i announced in the beginning so one of my biggest learning was how important preparation is creating a mood board at the start some kind of shot list think about what assets you want to use maybe pre-download them and also what helped me is creating like a list of everything you want to add to achieve the look in the end for example add volumetrics um, add a smoke trail improve the ground and so on this really helped me that i could work like task by task work everything off 
and focus on that and I did not have to think about while creating hmm, what I what do I have to do next and so on. So this definitely helped a lot. But what was also a big time saver for me was reusing old assets. For example, I had from a project I did a while ago, I had the smoke trails in Embergen. So I just opened up that project and obviously retimed the animation a bit and changed some parameters, but it was way faster than if I had to figure out everything from scratch. So this definitely helps so much. And that's why I would also suggest that if you finish a project, um, put the whole project folder in some kind of archive, but that you know where it is and you can always access the stuff you created in that project while you're working on future projects. The last thing that honestly surprised me, but what really helped me was that it was like split into these three parts, like the five minute, 30 minute, two hours. Maybe don't split it exactly like this, but if you put in like regular breaks where you can first of all, like recharge yourself, but also think about what you want to do next. And yeah, like as I told you before, create a list or something like that, that really helps um, to, yeah, just be more efficient and don't do things twice or, yeah, it just helps you being more organized during the creation process. In the end, I really want to mention that it's important to take your time when creating art. This was just an experiment to see how much I could do in two hours, but honestly, like the whole uniqueness of an animation and the whole beauty of an animation, um, in my opinion, is in all the small little details, in all the polishing and fine-tuning you do in the end which will obviously take way more time but i think that's a really important part and i don't want to encourage with these videos that you just create something in one hour and yeah don't take your time anymore for art because yeah in the end art is a process and it just takes time but also again it's cool to know especially if you work for a client or under time pressure that you actually are able to create something um, real quick and that you can work efficient because then you can also become more profitable as a freelancer. In the end, it's really important that you as an artist with your experience decide when it's time to do something real quick and just um, put it out there or when is the time to actually put in the time and create a masterpiece. And that's why I also took some time after I finished the two hour challenge to even polish the animation some more, creating the first three shots, adding some post processing to create one final animation that I like and that I'm satisfied with. And here is this final animation I envisioned in the beginning. I hope I could show you some tips and tricks in this video that will help you become more efficient, but also give you a behind the scenes look how I create an animation like this. Make sure to subscribe to not miss anything in the future and also like the video if you liked it. And let me know in the comment, what do you think about the different stages, especially what do you think about the last one after two hours and rate it from one to 10. And with that, I wish you all a great week and goodbye.